Hey everybody! In today's tutorial, I'm doing a sped up watercolor in which I turn an adorable, formerly very innocent bunny into a prisoner with a little prisoner friend. I know that sounds wrong, but it's adorable, so trust me. I have this adorable heaven sent stamp with a bunny in pajamas from Honey Bee Stamps. And I don't know what possesses me to take my stamp images and corrupt them, but this struck me as really funny when I was doing it. And so I hope you can appreciate my dark and twisted humor. It was actually inspired by the sentiment that you see on my desk, small gang. You and I are more than friends. We're like a really small gang. So technically, the inspiration came from Honey Bee itself, not from me. Anyway, this bunny is about to lead a life of crime. And you are going to get to watch me transform this adorable bunny in pajamas. So first, I am starting with, I have a full pan over to the side of watercolor and this is a custom mix called Jane's Gray that I mixed myself. This is from a book that I will link you to below the video and on my blog which lists a small group of Daniel Smith watercolor colors that can be used as the ultimate mixing palette. And I've talked about this palette before. It's great because it's a small limited palette that you can take with you anywhere. And it allows you to mix hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of colors. And I was not friends with this palette at first because I had not purchased the book that I'm talking about. But I did download the book finally. And after I had put the palette together, and I was actually looking at it on my iPad on a plane, and I was studying all the colors. I couldn't believe all the colors that this woman gets with this limited palette. And then I decided after I got home, I really needed the paper copy because I needed it in front of me when I was painting to be able to achieve these mixes. So I ended up purchasing the book. And now that I have the book, I actually am thinking about buying a second one because I would like to cut one up and put it into a smaller format. Some of the little swatches that I use on a regular basis that teach me how to mix these colors. I have a group on Facebook that we split tubes of Daniel Smith watercolor so that everybody in the group can get the full line for less than a million dollars. <laughs> it's a really economical way to buy these beautiful watercolors. And I split them and put them all in half pans and little groupings of about 30 colors each. And it's a real affordable way to get the whole Daniel Smith line. And we have a lot of fun. We share our projects that we're working on. And if you like watercolor, you can search for the Daniel Smith watercolor split group. And then there are three questions that you have to answer. Please answer those questions or I cannot approve you for the group. For some reason, people don't have the ability to follow instructions. And the instructions say, if you don't answer these questions, you will not be in the group. And they don't answer the questions. I don't get it. But all of that to say, I'm using Jane's Gray, which is perfect, perfect custom mixed gray. I love it so much. And mixed grays tend to be better and less flat than just buying a gray in a tube. So I love this one and I use it a lot. That's why I have a full pan instead of a half pan. So anyway, the idea of the gang made me think I could turn his pajamas into a little convict outfit. And it completely cracks me up. So I'm doing a little bit lighter of a stripe on the left-hand side because you can see here how his pajamas, the, his right side, my left side, is in front of the other side 
of his PJs. And so I have them set into the background a little bit. And so I'm making the stripes a little bit darker on that side. And I love this image because it's big enough to paint. I can think of all kinds of things I can paint onto these pajamas with my teeny tiny travel brush and my twisted imagination. So stripes is just one of those things. But doesn't he totally look like a little jail bunny? It's just hilarious. These are the things I think about. Just FYI. So now I'm going to do his little feet. And what's great about this image is he's a bunny. So I can actually paint the entire thing in shades of this Jane's gray, just a lighter gray for the bunny and then a darker gray for his little prison outfit. So I'll just go around the edges. This ink is so perfect because it doesn't matter what color you paint on top of it. It's never going to interfere with the image. When I used to do no line watercolor, really the lightest colors that I could get were yellows. And I used those because yellow does also kind of blend with both cool and warm colors pretty well. But you would get a little halo. And with this ink, you get nothing but the color that you're painting with or using Copic markers with or whatever. So I really love that. So the little bunny, since he has kind of a round face, he's going to be darker at the edges and he's going to be a little bit darker down near his chin. And then there's a section of his neck that you can see just poking out of his uniform. So I'm making that pretty dark. And then I have to make his little paws shaded and the little cuffs on his pajamas slash prison outfit. Now, I have to say, I normally would not pick up a hitchhiker. You know how you see those signs that say, you're in a prison area, don't pick up a hitchhiker. Well, I wouldn't pick up a hitchhiker not in a prison area. I don't know about you guys, but it's not 1964. We don't need to be picking up hitchhikers. However, if on the side of the road, I saw a bunny in a convict outfit hitching on the road, I would pick him up. I'm just saying. I might be on a murder podcast after that, but I think we can agree that you would pick this bunny up. Now, I have stamped and masked his little paw because every gang needs more than one member, right? So I'm taking the little bunny doll from the set, which is supremely adorable. And I'm having my convict bunny hold him by the paw. And I'm going to paint him the exact same way. He'll have little stripes too. It's like they escaped from bunny Alcatraz. And they're now on the lamb. And I'm picking them up in my 1964 Dodge station wagon and then possibly getting murdered. We'll see. So he's easy to paint too. I love his little fat belly. This is a number two Escoda travel brush. I have two different kinds of Escoda travel brushes. These are synthetic, so they are cruelty free, which is the only way to paint a bunny is with a cruelty free brush, right? And this one is a sable mimic. And they also make a squirrel mimic, which I love because the squirrel, regular squirrel and squirrel mimic brushes hold a lot more water, which is perfect for watercolor. But the point on these brushes is amazing. I'll link you to the travel sets and I will only buy travel sets from now on because the brushes are always safe. I don't have a cat messing them up or me leaving them somewhere other than their travel case and having the tip be compromised. So I'm adding a little pink to his ears and his cheeks as well, just a tiny amount, not much. And then shading his ear that's in the back a little bit darker than the ear that's in the front. But look how cute he is. That is seriously adorable. Okay, so now I have a pit pen that I'm coloring the eyes of the bunny with. And it is important you leave both of these set up in your Misty. 
And I'm not doing this to get a perfect image. I'm just doing this to show me the eyes so that I can color directly on the paper. This is cold press paper. So it has a rougher surface. So this isn't a technique that'll get you a perfect image. So I need to make it perfect with my pit pen. But this gives me an idea of where it is so I don't give him the crazy eye, even though he has escaped from prison and is about to go on some kind of rampage with his little friend. I still don't want him to have the crazy eye. I want him to have the eye he was illustrated with. So I can just take this and sort of perfect the edges where it came in contact with that rough paper. And this is a fine point pit pen. You can see the F on the barrel. You can get these in sets. There's even a finer one than this, but this is good enough for what I'm doing here. And since I'm using my original Misty, I was able to have both stamp images set up at the same time and not have to move them. So I'll be able to do the same thing with the tiny gang member that he is holding in his hand. So I'll put that up in the top corner. Make sure it's in the right place. I don't know why it's not going to move. It's the Misty, but I'm superstitious sometimes when I stamp. And I'm a little afraid that my stamps get possessed and move around. So I did the same thing, just colored his eyes. And that's really all I need is one shot because these are so tiny that I can really just make a little dot with the end of the pen for the bunny eyes. Look how cute that is. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm sure poor Melissa never intended her beautiful little bunny to be a jailbird, but you know what happens when I get a hold of a stamp? Like the rules are out the window. I'm just saying. So now I'm going to take this cinnamon, which is adorable and also huge. And FYI, I took both of these stamps and sort of placed them with the imaging sheets to make sure that they would fit on this piece of watercolor paper before I stamped and watercolored. And it turns out that they are the perfect size to exactly fit on a card front together. And I'm just checking it to make sure that it's straight. And it looks good. And I'm using VersaFine Claire, which is the only thing that I trust with my cold press watercolor paper. It is such a crisp black ink. And I can stamp it a few times and completely eliminate the problems that you usually get with textured paper and black ink. This is my sole ink when it comes to watercolor paper. So three times will be the charm. I can see I need a little bit more ink on that really small and a little bit on the friends. So I'll push in those two areas. And that is that. How cute is that? <laughs> so don't pick up hitchhikers. And thanks so much for watching.